This game is rad awesome, and I'll show you why. You play as Jackie Estacado, and you got Power of the Darkness and shit like that. Thankfully, there's a recap of the first Darkness if you actually care, because the first Darkness is on PC for some reason. You get seated at the table to meet with two OnlyFans thoughts, however, they soon begin to experience what the patriarchy is capable of. You and the rest of your crew are unfortunate victims of a school shooting, and your widow wags are all kinds of fucked up. Two problems that you find here is that the aiming sensitivity is really fucking high, and there's goddamn aim assist in my PC game! What? The shooty bang bang part is short, thankfully, and your lovely friends decide to give you a premature cremation so your ashes are given to your loved ones. Nah, just kidding, your darkness comes out and you start killing a bunch of people. You get to use your darkness powers now, and fuck me, this game was like an appetizer for Doom 2016. Shit, it even has fucking glory holes. I mean, glory kills. You can do some pretty metal shit here, like picking up parking meters and impaling these douchebags. You can even rip off car doors to use them as a shield or throw them to cut some poor bastard in half. You find these purple thingy majiggies all throughout the game which allow you to upgrade Jackie. The skill tree is about as basic as a white woman at Starbucks. However, the first skill you should get is Combat Belt as you don't have a whole lot of ammo to begin with. If this part doesn't show you how awesome the game is, then I don't know what will. I mean, what other game can you pick up a trash can lid and throw it to saw some guy's spring box off? Once you get down to the subway, the game introduces the most annoying mechanic in the game, light. Yeah, they've added in this annoying light mechanic to prevent you from going beast mode and all these wops, but at the same time, for a good chunk of all the levels in the game, you're just eyeballing the walls and the fucking ceiling looking for anything that's glowing white. This is also the first level in the game where you can get the shotgun. Sounds sexy and can blow enemies into spaghetti sauce. I swear it's more satisfying than sex. You also have hallucinations about your dead goth GF, and then you get hit by a train. <laughs> After the subway, you get transported to a mental ward, and unfortunately, this game is littered with these segments. The only good thing about it is the humor in these segments. The first time in the ward is also a short one before going back to the real world and watching some whore deep throat your manhood. Then you go back to your mansion. Here, you can fuck about the place just to talk to all the other characters before you start simping over a fucking dead woman. Aunt Sarah, who's the best character in the game by the way, tells you to stop simping lest the prophecy of the Ancient One falls upon us all. After the mansion, you gotta go and find some fuckboy named Swifty. At this point, you should have enough essence to unlock the execution to get more ammo. And yeah, it does make a difference. Most of the level is a linear shooty bang bang roller coaster. The highlight of it though is all these car doors and steel poles you can get. Seriously, this shit is cathartic. It's like a drug. It's some of the most satisfying shit ever and I can't get enough. Near the end of the level is a boss battle with Swifty. This is like a Fisher Price X boss battle. Just murder all these fuckers and wait for the British gremlin. Oh yeah, I forgot to introduce this guy. I have no fucking clue what this dude's name is, as he's never referenced in the game by name once. Either way, this little baller is the shit. He's kind of like the Garrus to your shepherd. Anyway, just wait for British Gremlin to give you these explosive tanks and throw it at Swifty a few times. After Swifty, you get a small scene where Jackie starts simping for his QT 3.14 goth GF. Unfortunately, she ain't of the big titty variety, so she kind of loses out on a few points. However, you still gotta kill that Swifty fucker. This level is quite challenging, especially on the higher difficulty, simply due to the ridiculous amount of light sources and the clown car of enemies it likes to spawn. Oh, and these fucking indestructible light sources that can only be turned off by destroying its generator. But the generators are located in certain places where you have no choice but to get flashbanged and get fucked by some tard with a baseball bat. In the end, you get up to Swifty and the darkness decides to show him how to divide by two. But hey, at least you got money from it. Then you go back to the mansion and you meet up with Johnny fucking Powell. This googly-eyed, cracked-up, psychosis-ridden basket case is like the third best character in the game. 
You're told that you have to go to a whorehouse to meet up with one of your henchmen's <clears throat> contacts. So you know what that means, right? Oh, you bet your ass I'm gonna get lucky here. Jesus Christ, honey, did you get dressed by a dumpster? After a disappointing... Uh, hey, baby. <laughs> after a disappointing encounter with the Lady of the Night, you resume your normal duties of murdering anything that moves. Once you get up to this point with the indestructible light, you get to play as the British Gremlin. Unfortunately, there's this really retarded part in the vents where in order for you to get past a certain section, you actually have to turn V-Sync on. Like, well, what the fuck sense does that make? Anyways, you get to meet with new enemies that have a small part of the darkness in them. They're not exactly harder per se, but you do have a harder time opening them up for executions. This is also the first level where the enemies will have these flashbang flares, and these goddamn things are a real tumor on the body cell. At the end of the level, you meet up with Victor, who kinda looks like what happens when Freddy Krueger fucks Chris Angel. He goes into a long ass spiel about how the darkness doesn't deserve a host like Jackie and needs to be controlled and all that, however towards the end of the game Victor was actually right but we'll get to that later. After nailing some dude upon the cross, Chris Angel decides to torch the entire place. Depending on what difficulty you play on, this level is quite hard as you have no weapon until the very last part of the game. The key here is speed and using your demon arms. Pick up whatever objects you can and never stop moving. The following level is kind of when the game ramps it up with the difficulty. This is namely due to these fucking headaches with the portable lights. The entire car parking area is like a big ass space with fuck tons of light and hyper accurate enemies where even if just a pixel of your body is exposed they waste no goddamn bullets. Once you get up to the mansion part you'll come up on these annoying fucking shield dudes that you have to whittle down with bullets then rip their shields off. Sometimes these fuckers spawn with those light bastards so enjoy a migraine while getting pummeled. After getting a buckshot facial, you go back to the ward, and this is the longest ward section in the entire game, and all it really is is just the darkness gaslighting Jackie into thinking he is insane. Next level has you going to Aunt Sarah's funeral before that dick face McFuckwad that gave you a buckshot facial shows up and fucks everything up. This is one of my favorite levels in the game. I mean, the graveyard just looks so fucking cool. It's like the kind of shit I would hang up on my wall. Despite how wide and open this graveyard area seems to be, it's actually quite linear. Shit, it's more linear than a straight line. And this is where you find out that that shit ball that ruined your funeral is bra- is brag. He's really not that hard, but annoying. Namely due to his constant teleporting or his fucking dash move that combos into three orbs and have a range of a football field. Hellgate, huh? Thanks for the help, asshole. Yes. You see why I like this game? This carnival level is one I've always had problems with regardless of what difficulty I played on. It is genuinely that hard. But before that, you get these small sections with Jenny that involve playing a few carnival games. I don't know what happens if you choose not to, granted if you even have the choice to begin with, but I've chosen to play these because I'm not an asshole. Then comes the meat of the level, and my fucking lord is this the hardest shit ever. The biggest hurdle is trying to deal with the insane light coverage that's in the level while balancing getting away from the hordes of enemies that spawn, let alone the bastards that teleport everywhere. This is where gun channeling comes into play if you've unlocked it. If there's too many enemies or you're running out of ammo, for the love of Satan, abuse the gun channeling as much as possible. The worst has yet to come, especially after you play the second carnival game for Jenny. You get swarmed with a multitude of ranged and teleporting melee enemies, and those motherfuckers with the goddamn looks. I've only made it out by the very skin of my teeth and a combination of luck. 
The remainder of the level where you gotta use the explosives to blow up the gate is piss ass easy, however. Next is a very slow turn section. Personally, this level in its entirety is really unnecessary. Thankfully, it's just four minutes long, and then at the end, you get smashed in an Iron Maiden by Chris Angel. Oh god, not another ward section. Fuck this. You get to play as the British Gremlin in this pseudo-MGS section. The British Gremlin has the durability of glass, so you don't have a whole lot of room to make mistakes. Overall, the level is quite easy. Once freed, you start off the level with the 1887 shotgun. And that's the sound of all the MW2 players creaming themselves at the sight of the good old Ancient One. Yeah, it's just as good here as it was in MW2. You get into a boss battle with Peevish, who has a small portion of your darkness. This part is quite hard simply because you are incapable of healing yourself with anything. So for most of the battle, you're just going to be on your last bar of health and have to gawk at a half-red screen all the time. The one strategy I found is to just simply go around in circles and never stop moving. Next level is in the Wesker Mansion. Excuse me, but I forgot to record the beginning parts of the level. However, this horde part in the middle of the mansion can place its succulent lips slowly upon my rancid ball sack. Just like in the carnival level, this is where you must use gun channeling as much as possible. You got the whole shebang here, from the shotgun users, to the shield dudes, to the teleporter fuckos, and those goddamn crackers with the whips. Yeah, I died here a lot, so don't feel bad. Once you get up to the top of the mansion, you get to fight Victor. Surprisingly, Victor is not all that hard, just takes a while to kill. The only thing you gotta worry about is that one attack where he does this slash attack move. I have no fucking idea how you're supposed to defend yourself against it, and whenever I did, it just didn't work. Other than that, take a whack at his fucked up face and have fun. Here is another ward section. This one is the second longest in the game, and the only good thing about it is that you actually get to choose to yeet yourself off of the building, which accurately describes what I want to do every time I get here. There's also a different ending if you choose to stay, but eh, fuck that. Now you're in the deepest, darkest depths of hell, fighting your way through hordes of demons to rescue your thought. I must say, the firearms industry in hell could use a makeover. This entire level is piss-ass easy, just walk in a straight line and shoot anything that comes at you. When you rescue Jenny, you find that she's the fucking Angelus. Which explains why the darkness always wanted to separate you and Jenny, and why Victor was actually right all this time. Despite leaving on a significant cliffhanger, there has yet to be a sequel, unfortunately. Such a shame, too, because the darkness universe has so much potential. The Darkness 2 also has Vendettas, a small co-op oriented campaign that runs in parallel to the main game. You get your own set of unique characters as well. The enemy dude, Jew bitch, the rioter, and the only good character worth the damn. I like Jim Lee simply because he's a Scot that says a funny with a silly accent. <laughs> the Jew bitch isn't that bad either, but her arm of the night is really fucking overpowered. It deals fuck tons of damage and has unlimited ammo. The anime dude and the criminal kind of suck in my opinion. The Vendetta is about an hour or two with six missions to complete that involve going to the middle of nowhere and killing some mob head. For what it is, it's fun, simple, and doesn't overstay its welcome, and it's completely optional. Nevertheless, The Darkness 2 is a fucking awesome romp of a time, and is on sale more times than a Vegas prostitute. Sure, it sure as shit ain't gonna blow your mind or anything like that, but it sure as shit is more for the money than what most of the crap has released in the last 10 years since this game came out. 